Hello, I uh, hope you guys are all keeping well. So this is going to be today's lesson where we're looking at exam paper questions for the sequences and series questions, both arithmetic and um, geometric. So in your booklet that you were given at the start of the year with all the past exam paper questions, I believe this is on page 13 or 14. Um, it might be a bit further than that because I've just got the old version on my computer at home. So you were given this from the 2018 exam paper. Seven numbers in an arithmetic progression. Um, it should say find. Find the seven numbers in an arithmetic progression such that the last term is 71 and the sum of the numbers is 329. Find the seven numbers. <clears throat> so this was a five mark question for you to do. Um, and I'm just going to talk you through step by step what you would do for this. So first thing is to notice that it's talking about an arithmetic progression and it has given us the last term and the sum there. So I would begin by going to the sum of um, an arithmetic progression and if we have got the last term then we know the formula that we can use is a shorter version which is a plus l. So I know that the sum of the seven numbers is 329 because I've been told that. I know that the last number is 71 because I've also been told that. And I know that the number of numbers that I'm looking for or the total of is 7. So if I substitute those values in, I've got 329 is equal to 7 over 2, A plus 71. So here I've just done a little bit of rearranging. Um, so 7 over 2 is the same as 3.5. So if I divide by that on the other side, I'll get 94. And then 94 take away the 71 tells me that the first term in the sequence is in fact 23. So we know that our first term is 23. And obviously our last term is 71. So to finish off the question and find the remaining numbers, we're going to need to, to have a think about that now. So if the first term is this 23 and the seventh term is 71, that means that I've added a difference. Oh, not going to quite have enough room there. I've added the difference in total um, six times. So once to get to the second term, again, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then there we go, so that's the seventh there. So if I calculate the difference between these two numbers, so 71 take away the 23, that gives me 48. And if I divide that difference up six times, because we've added this difference six times, then we're going to get our answer of eight. So the numbers are going up by eight each time. So I'll write that over here. So our first term is 23. Adding on 8 gives us 31, adding on 8 gives us 39, etc, etc, until you get the full sequence. So those, that's our final answer. Those are the seven numbers in the sequence. And so five marks for that one. So here is the second example that I would like to look at in this lesson. Um, for the first part of the question, it's worth one mark. I'm just going to email you the mark scheme for that because it's just sort of a standard response that they're looking for. Um, so I'm going to focus on this second part. So a geometric progression V has first term 2 and common ratio R. Another progression is formed, we're going to call this one W, by squaring each term in V. Show that W is also geometric. Given the sum to infinity of W is three times that of V, find the value of R. <coughs> okay, it's just, there's so much to read there and try to decipher. It really does take time. So let's focus on just the first sentence. So the geometric progression V has a first term of two and a common ratio of R. So if I write down V here, let's start with there. So the first term is two, and then I get the next term, by multiplying that value by r, I'd get the next term by multiplying that by r, I'd get the next term by multiplying that by r, okay, so that, that seems to be all right. Another progression is formed by squaring each term in v. 
So let's try that part. So we're just taking this one sentence at a time, W. So if I take the first term and square it, I get 4. If I take the second term here, this 2R, and square that, be careful, that's going to give you 4R squared. If I take the next term and square that, I'm going to have 4R to the power of 4. And the next term, I'm going to have 4R to the power of 6. Okay, so remembering our rules for indices, you know, if we're squaring it, it's in a set of brackets. So the 2 gets squared, which is where I get the 4 from. And then these two powers get multiplied together, which is why I've got a power of 6 there and not a power of 5. I'm not adding those, those indices. All right then, so that is, that's my um, second sentence dealt with now. So let's have a look at my third sentence. Show that W is also geometric. So that's my actual sort of first command there in this question. So showing that it's geometric, that means that the common ratio should be the same between terms. So if I have a look at the common ratio for the first two terms, uh, I'm going to get the, the common ratio by dividing the next term by the previous one. So that's going to be 4R squared divided by 4. So I get a common ratio of R squared. Let's have a look at the common ratio for the next two terms. So 4R to the power of 4 and 4R squared. So the 4s cancel and we also get R squared. And if you wanted to, you could go on to the next one as well. There's no need though at this point. You know, 2 is enough to prove it. So 4R to the power of 6 divided by 4R to the power of 4. They are also going to cancel to give me R squared. So I would say common ratio is the same, therefore is a geometric sequence. Okay, so that's that's the sort of first part of the question actually answered. So I'm going to just give that a little tick to say I've done it. Given the sum to infinity of W is three times that of V, find the value of R. Okay, so we need to set up an equation for this. So this is what I'd start with writing because what I often find is the mistake with these questions is that people put the three in the wrong place. So the sum to infinity of W is three times that of V. So you need to make sure that the 3 is with the sum of V. You're multiplying that by 3, not the W part. So let's get the formulas up and substitute into those. And here you have it. So this is the sum to infinity, A over 1 minus R. Uh, it's the same formula regardless of whether it converges or diverges. Um, so you don't need to worry about the stipulation that they are converging series. So... My first term in W was 4, so you can see that I've substituted 4 into here. And my common ratio for that, I used that in sort of the first part of the question where it asked me to show that it was geometric, so that's R squared. On the second one, V, my first term is 2 and my common ratio is R, so that's what I've got there. So putting those into a um, sort of an equation to solve now, I've got 4 over 1 minus R squared is equal to 3 times by 2 over 1 minus r. How you go about solving this now is up to you. Um, pause it, have a go, and I'll show you my solution when you unpause it. Okay, so hopefully you are at a similar point. Um, so you've taken the denominators and multiplied across, expanded your brackets, um, got to a quadratic. At that point, you might have used your solver on your calculator, and that's fine. Um, so then you get down to this point where you've got two solutions. So you, R can either be minus a third or R can be equivalent to one. And we just need to choose one of those. It can't be both. If I just take you back up slightly, have a look at what would happen if I substituted R equals one into there or into there. You'd notice that your denominator would become zero. Now, that would create an asymptote, it would create a math error on your calculator if you try doing 4 divided by 0. So we can't really take R to be equivalent to 1. That's not also going to produce a geometric sequence. 
So the, the final solution here is going to be this r is equal to minus 1 over 3. Thank you. Right, next example. So here is a final example of um, a question that we're going to look at today. And this, I suppose, is sort of categorised as the sort of modelling um, where we would use the geometric series to sort of model real life situations. So, you know, always trying to show you where this maths is useful. So at the beginning of each year, Iman invests £5,000. So that is every year clearly quite rich, to put £5,000 in at the start of every year. He's getting compound interest at a rate of 3%. The interest is added at the end of each year. Find the total of amount his, in his savings at the end of the 20th year, correct to the nearest pound. Okay, so if you do go to the final part of chapter 3 in your textbooks, you will find a whole series of questions around modelling using um, the both of the series. Um, but we're just going to sort of dip in and have a look at this one here. So in the first year, so I'm just going to write here, year one, he will have invested £5,000 and at the end of that year he will have received 1.03% interest. So if you care to, you can calculate what that is. And I get here 5,150 in year two, he has got the 5,150, which is going to be multiplied by the 1.03. Uh, and that, you know, could arguably be written as the amount he invested in the first year times by the 1.03 squared. But he's also going to be adding £5,000 into that account which is going to be getting multiplied by the 1.03 by the end of the year too. So we've got those two things coming together. So here we've got those two amounts there. So what, what is occurring with this? What we've got is a geometric function. The first term is going to be this 5,000 times by 1.03 which is this 5150. Then we've got this common ratio, and this common ratio is going to be that multiplying by 1.03 each time. So the quickest way for me to find the sum of those 20 years is just to use the formula. So a brackets 1 minus r to the power of n all over 1 minus r. So if we substitute those in, we've got this 5150 multiplied by 1 minus 1 1.03 to the power of 20 all over 1 minus 1 1.03. And if you want to give that to the sort of nearest pound, this person after 20 years would have 138,000 382 pounds in his bank account and there we have it so that's the final part of that question and that's how you would use it in the modeling context thanks for watching guys